One of the things I like to do on pots, especially bowl forms and tea bowl forms, is change the outside surface and I do it with faceting. Faceting the pots can happen at a curved facet. Here's a slightly curved one. Eh, this one's a little bit more straight up and down. So you have several options here. I'm going to show you how to get all of these options. You need a couple of tools, simple tools. These cheese cutters. If you can find these in a uh, flea market, grab them. Because these metal ones aren't around much anymore. Everything's made of plastic. But what I do is I take this roller and I fix it at each end with epoxy so it doesn't roll. Otherwise, the piece I facet from the pot wraps around the bar and clogs the tool up. I also remove the wire that comes with the cheese cutter. Two screws here, undo them, pull this off, and I put my own wire on. This one is a piece of wiggle wire. This one is just a thin, straight, serrated wire. It has a little texture on it, so it cuts clay really easily. So let me show you how I fasten. Okay, I've dampened the wheel head just a little bit. I'm going to smooth the bottom of the lump of clay, attach it to the wheel head, and get it centered. Now, this is about two and a half pounds of clay, and that's just an average bowl size and it's a, a useful size to have in the house, in the kitchen. I'm leaving the base about three quarters to an inch thick because I want to trim a foot underneath these cups or these bowls later. I'm going to open up into a curve. So the inside of the bowl is already curving. As I bring my fingertips outward, they lighten up pressure and they rise upward. That curves the inside of the bowl. Now I'm going to bring up the cylinder, which will eventually be a wide open bowl. But the way we facet, the way I facet, is to facet from a cylindrical form and then stretch it outward. I'm going to facet away half the thickness of this wall. So right now this wall is about half an inch thick. You want to be aware of one thing here. The inside grooves that your fingertip makes inside here, as you facet the wall and then push it outward, you're going to discover that those horizontal lines from your fingertips get pushed into the outside wall. So I don't want those in there. I use a rib and I slide down the inside and back out again, smoothing the inside completely. And I keep it into a cylindrical form. And use a rib and flatten it completely. Again, trying to avoid putting grooves at the inside wall. Now, maybe you've noticed something. Down here, I have an alcove or a groove underneath the wall. I want to get the wire of the cheese cutter underneath the wall. And that's where I place the wire when I start the faceting. Before I do that, I have to get the water from the inside of the pot out of there. If I don't take the water out now, I discover in a minute or so, it's pretty mushy in there. So that helps keep the integrity of the inside strong. Okay, this is how I do a straight up facet. I'm going to take this straight wire tool, stop the wheel, let me clean this off here, I'm going to clean the slip off the wheel head, but I'm going to do something else that I've learned helps a lot during this process. I'm going to wet this whole area again, and you'll see why in a second. Stop the wheel, I'm going to start here, I'm going to hold the tool on my fingertips, it's balanced very lightly on my fingertips with my thumb on top. I'm going to put this fingertip right inside the rim. As I pull this upward, I don't want to push the rim inward because the wire will leave the wall too early. I want to cut the rim exactly in half with my facet. It's a timely thing. It's a, a thing that you want to do with a little bit of spontaneity. Pull these off. One of the things I'm trying to do is make sure 
that I don't have any of this thrown surface between my facets. So I make sure at this point that this wire, this end, is actually penetrating into that or crossing over into that last facet I've made. Now, to keep these facets going straight up and down, the next step is pretty important. Now, remember I put water on here? These pieces will stick to a dry wheel head, and they're a hassle to get off. So, I just do this, remove them, and now clean the wheel head again. Redefine this area down here. Next step, take a bit of water and drip it down the inside wall only. I don't want any water covering my facets right now. That assures me that my fingertips are sliding easily on the inside wall. If they're tacky, I will twist the pot a bit. And I'll show you that in a moment. Now I'm just going to lightly, a few strokes at a time, push this bowl outward. Make sure it stays wet. Smooth the rim a little bit. And I'm using as much of the broad side of my finger as I can. I don't want to use a fingertip because I'll create horizontal bumps coming through the facets. So lean the rim out and then bring my fingertips upward. Now the wheel's going fairly quickly. I am actually watching here at nearly 12 o'clock. I want to see the profile of the pot change. I'm not watching what my hands are doing, I'm watching what they're producing by watching this place here. So push it out, and now deal with the rim again. Oh, here's something for you to notice. I've torn the rim, and that happens very easily if the wall is faceted too thinly. So I'm just going to pull this away. So I'm going to remove this and make another bolt. So I'm refaceting this next bowl, just being a bit aware that not to make the the wall's too thin. Now as I facet around the pot, one facet after the other, you can't be guaranteed that the last facet is the same width as the ones prior, and that's okay. I'm going to wet the inside again. Now let's hope we can pull this out without cracking the rim. That's a bit better. Take the water from the inside, smooth the rim, Lean it out just one little bit more. I'm going to use this rubber rib on the inside, smooth it a bit, undercut here. This undercut is a place for the wire to grab and it's pulled outward. Now, those are still a little turned, a little curvy. That little piece there stuck to the side, I'll deal with that later. I don't touch it now because I'm only going to mess up the wall. Now I'm going to do one that's really swirl. So I've made another cylinder and I'm just going to smooth the outside. Block, block off the rim, make it kind of squarish. 
make sure I've got an alcove at the bottom. Clean the water from the inside. Now when I made the other faceted pot, I told you that if you keep water inside, you get a little bit of twist but not very much in the facets as you open up the piece. This time I really want them twisted. You do two things. One is facet on a curve and two, don't put any water inside. So my fingertips are tacky against the inside wall. And that happens when I open it up. So I'm adjusting this thing to be a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. Now, if I hold it upright, I get a very thin facet. If I hold it perpendicular to the wheel head, or parallel to the wheel head, I'll get a very broad facet. You can also push the, the roller against the pot and flatten it a bit. That'll assure you you'll get a really wide facet. I'm going to start at 3 o'clock. Again, balance the tool on my fingertips. And as I pull it upward, I'm going to turn the wheel head about a sixth of the circle. It's a rhythm thing again. You're trying to repeat the same curve each time. It's not easy, but give it your best shot. Pull them off, lay them on the wheel head. You can recycle those faceted pieces later. Okay, let's get rid of these. Now, I'm going to put just a little bit of water in here. So my fingertips are slightly damp. Tacky is a good thing here. And open this up. Now again, I'm watching here, I'm watching the profile at one o'clock or 12 o'clock, watching the bowl change shape. If the wheel is spinning slowly, I can't see the profile. So that's why I sort of have to make it into a blur. Let's clean the inside and clean the rim. Now, on the first bowl I made, I left the rim alone, but one other option one can do is dampen it and use the curved side of a rib and press it downward over the facets just a little bit. Now the rim goes a little uneven during this whole process and that's okay by me. I don't mind that. Use the rib at the inside again. Put a swirl in it. Undercut down below. And see what we've got. Now those are really twisted facets and that's alright.